Well, look at that, my friends. You made it to Friday. Here we are done with the first 10 days. The first third of January is over, and I am celebrating that and everything else by welcoming to the program Christian Finnegan and Ophir Eisenberg, two of my all-time favorite comedians, back together here on the podcast, and all three of us will be together along with J.L. Covan, John Carroll, Garrett Sever, and so many stand-up community members in Las Vegas on March 22nd and 23rd. I open our conversation talking about that, but Christian Finnegan, Ophir Eisenberg, O'Finnegan, are back, and that starts at 20 minutes in after my Friday news recap. But before that, I'm going to do the news. Yeah, that's right. On a Friday, I am still going to try to do the news. I set the bar pretty high last week, and eh, I got some time. I want to try to get to it. So here are your headlines for the last 24 hours here on January 12th, 2023. First, the big Trump trial story yesterday was, and there's going to be one pretty much every day. Let's just get used to it. Not every day, but I'm sure every week at least on the final day of his civil fraud trial in Manhattan, the disgraced former president, now four times indicted loser, lost again. He unleashed a spate of insults, according to the New York Times reporting on it, all directed at the attorney general, the judge overseeing the case. He accused both of them of pursuing their own political agendas and declared himself, I'm an innocent man. I'm innocent, he said. The judge instructed the former president's lawyer to, quote, control your client. But Trump streamed on for several minutes, arguing the attorney general should pay him for what he's gone through. The episode, the New York Times writes, was a dramatic conclusion to a month-long trial during which the New York Attorney General Letitia James accused Trump of violating state law by inflating the value of his properties. The Attorney General is looking to extract $370 million penalty from Trump, oust the former president from his own company and from the wider world of New York real estate. Now, the president's appearance wasn't mandatory. Instead, with just four days before the Iowa caucus, he appeared to be making a calculation that it's politically advantageous for him to show up is one opinion a lot of people are having. He realizes that when he appears in court, his fundraising shoots up, motivates his base, sees him as a persecuted by the courts and by the Biden administration, and also blocks his rivals in news coverage. A few other points about these appearances when he makes them. Oh, and in a related story, police on Long Island responded yesterday morning to a bomb threat at the home of the judge, Judge Arthur Engeron, who is presiding over that civil fraud case. And that's the other result and consequence of uh, this man-child's temper tantrums. People often get threatened and sadly too often hurt. All right. Well, moving on, all is not well among House Republicans. So hard right House Republicans yesterday met with the speaker, Mike Johnson. They pressured him to renege on the spending deal that he cut with Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer just days ago. Now, some conservatives left the meeting proclaiming that they were successful. But Johnson told reporters shortly thereafter he had made no commitments to back out of the deal. See, every Republican leader will always have the same problem. If they don't pass a bill that the Senate, which is controlled by Democrats, can pass and get to the president's desk to sign, then they won't get anything done ever, which is why so many Republicans themselves have already talked about how they have produced less than almost any other Congress ever ever in terms of, well, anything other than naming post offices. And so this will continue to be the dilemma. The hard right never wants a deal that the United States Senate can sign off on. So nothing will get done because they're controlled by talk radio, YouTube people telling them not to make a deal because that helps them get ratings and sell subscriptions and ads. But It doesn't help America move forward. At least that's always been my diagnosis, and I don't think now is any different. We'll see how much longer Mike Johnson has with the speaker's gavel as a result of these types of negotiations that have to happen, including deals that must conclude so that the government can stay open and American can pay its bills. Speaking of legislation, two House Democrats introduced legislation Wednesday. It'll go nowhere, but it would change a Trump era law saddling some scam victims with large tax bills on money stolen from them. How about that? I wonder who would benefit from that. This is actual legislation that would help people in this case, victims of terrible crimes where people are bilked for their savings. The bill would reinstate a tax deduction for personal casualty losses 
that was removed by congressional Republicans in 2017. The deduction covered sudden or unexpected events such as floods, fires, earthquakes, and thefts. But this is a great, great piece of policy that would make people's lives better. And I bet it's going nowhere in the Republican controlled house. And now to the other house, the White House, the Biden administration now awarding $623 million in grants to help build an electric vehicle charging network across the nation. Part of the major piece of legislation Congress passed last year, the Inflation Reduction Act, it was called, but really it is kind of a Green New Deal. Grants being announced Thursday will fund 47 EV charging stations related projects in 22 states in Puerto Rico, including 7,500 EV charging ports, according to officials. Read more about that as I did. It's real interesting, real important, and it's the future. The FAA announced it was investigating whether Boeing failed to ensure that its 737 MAX 9 plane was safe. Iran's Navy said it's seized a vessel loaded with crude oil off the coast of Oman. President Biden's son Hunter pled not guilty to charges of evading taxes on millions in income from foreign businesses. In Ohio, a grand jury declined to indict a woman who had miscarried a non-viable fetus at home on a felony charge of abuse of corpse. That was a really controversial case. Overtones of racism against this black woman and a grand jury is not going to indict her, which gives us a small sigh of relief in hopes that that could be the standard moving forward for that type of miscarriage. Two of America's largest natural gas producers announced a plan to merge. The deal between Chesapeake Energy and Southwestern Energy would recreate one of the largest energy producers in the United States. I'm going to have to talk to somebody who knows about that deal and whether or not it's good for America. I'm doubting it. There was a collision between two subway trains that injured dozens of people in Manhattan last week. I didn't even know about it, but apparently now news is breaking that the investigation found that it happened when pranksters pulled an emergency brake. Oh, man, that is the kind of thing teenage Pete Dominic would have done. And I am glad I didn't live in New York City and was only throwing snowballs and soft food items at moving cars and rural roadways. In climate news, nearly a quarter of humanity was living under drought in 2022 and 2023, according to the UN. And here's some good news. An Austrian heiress is looking for 50 people to help her give away $27 million. Those are your headlines for Friday. And look at that. I even brought some sound clips to today's show. All right, let's start with... Earth 2, the right-wing lunatics. Here's Kellyanne Conway reacting to Chris Christie dropping out. I fully agree with her here. Uh, She was talking to John Roberts on Fox News yesterday. And as despicable as she is, when she's right, she's right about the threat that Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis don't pose to Donald Trump. But I did want to ask your opinion on the effect of Chris Christie dropping out. It's not going to make much of a difference in Iowa. He was only at 3 percent, but he was at 12 percent in uh, New Hampshire. And I saw one analysis that maybe 65 percent of his vote or about 8 percent of the total vote could go to Nikki Haley, which would get her within six points of Donald Trump. Would it make a difference in New Hampshire? Well, that presupposes that they all still vote and they all go to Nikki Haley. Uh, They could have gone to Nikki Haley from the beginning, but they went to Chris Christie. And that's something that's really important. It's not just so easily transferable. And uh, let's face it, the non-Trump vote, the anti-Trump vote, as it were, turns out to be a very small percentage of these Republican primary and caucus electorates. But I think she would need to have Christie and Chris Sununu on the stage supporting her. Um, I'll tell you what, John, bottom line, these other candidates not named Trump have had ample opportunity to make their case to the voters. Fox News had two debates, Fox Business, Fox News. There was another two debates. They're out there on these town halls. They had a debate last night. Uh, Ron DeSantis, I know he's the governor of Florida, Mm -hmm. but he seems to be a resident of Iowa. They've had ample opportunity to make the case, and they failed to do that. I don't know how much will change between now and the end of the month in these two contests. All right. Well, we will be watching it right alongside with you. you. Kellyanne Green. All right, there you go. Fox News Earth 2. Let's stay on Fox News. This is Fox Business, where somehow one of the anchors was able to blame black folks for the reason why people die on airplanes. Attention, Boeing executives. DEI must die, not passengers on your planes. Steve Moore on the company's misguided priorities coming up next. All right, here is the former disgraced president, and I will play one clip of him. Trigger alert. This is a reporter you can just barely hear asking him whether or not he agreed with his lawyers who said, when you're the president, you can have SEAL Team 6 uh, assassinate your political opponents. President, do you agree with your lawyers what they said on Tuesday that 
you should not be prosecuted or could not be prosecuted if you ordered SEAL Team 6 to kill a political opponent. Well, you're talking about a totally different case, the immunity. I say this, on immunity, very simple, if a president of the United States does not have immunity, he'll be totally ineffective because he won't be able to do anything because it will mean he'll be prosecuted, strongly prosecuted perhaps, uh, as soon as he leaves office by his by the opposing party. So a president of the United States, I'm not talking just me, I'm talking any president has to have immunity. The president has to have immunity or else how can he president? How did Obama do it? How did all the other presidents besides Nixon do it? Yeah, well, OK, there you go. That is uh, Trump yesterday. And now let's listen to a Republican congressman who has no shame at all, who says that because Hunter Biden hired prostitutes, it means he trafficked women. He's a sex trafficker. He didn't do that. He chose to involve himself in sex trafficking. He chose to involve himself in hard drug use. He chose to sell influence and peddle access to his father and to the tune of millions of dollars, many to our enemies, China for one. Uh, and so this is all on him. And you know what? There's got to be consequences for your actions. So to sit there and say that this is about, you know, addiction or Republicans trying to pick on him, we're just trying to get to the truth and treat Hunter Biden like any other American citizen. Uh, at, looking at the things he's been charged with, I don't think sex trafficking is one of them. I know there are images with, with women, ostensibly prostitutes. Is that what you're referring to in the video when I you am, say sex yes. trafficking? Yes. But yeah, he's not absolutely. been charged with sex trafficking, just to be clear. No, but yes, but he certainly participated in it. Okay. For, or, all, all the evidence certainly shows that. And he's all, didn't do that. all the evidence certainly shows that he trafficked women. Hiring a prostitute is not engaging in sex trafficking. I mean, it's uh, a little bit more convoluted than that. I think it's fair to say. All right. Well, let's head over to Earth One, where Jasmine Crockett, our favorite congresswoman, at least one of our favorite congresswomen, absolutely tears Republicans to pieces. And this is just such an amazing rant. She is such an effective communicator. And I love it, love it, love it. Here she is. Let me tell you why nobody wants to talk to y'all behind closed doors, because y'all lie. That's just the bottom line. You have done it thus far in this investigation. You have done it this far as it relates to this committee. And every single hearing, y'all spin, spin, spin. I don't know how y'all are still standing right now because you should be quite dizzy from all the spinning that you're constantly doing when it comes to spinning the truth. You talk about free and fair elections, but you back a guy who we know tried to steal the election. And this isn't about what Democrats have to say. Let me remind you, for those of you that don't know how the justice system works, it's not a matter of the president went in and indicted Trump, but we are talking about grand juries. Grand juries are comprised of American citizens and the people that have entered pleas of guilty that will be flipping on your leader in a minute. They are Republicans. I do want to point that out. And half of them were Republicans that were handpicked by Donald Trump himself. So to be clear, whatever happens to your little leader, it's going to be because of the actions that he took. So you can talk all you want to about how January 6th was nonsense, but all of y'all were running at that time. Y'all were grabbing y'all's gas masks and y'all were running to your offices because you didn't know if they were coming to kill you. You should have cared that somebody was there to protect you, but instead you want to play games because you found out that it was your leader that decided that he wanted to propagate an insurrection on our country. So don't tell me that you care about the Constitution, because you don't. All you care about is Trump getting reelected, and I'll yield the last of my time to my leader. There you go, Jasmine Crockett on fire at the oversight hearing yesterday where they don't want to talk publicly to Hunter Biden because they can't lie about him. All right, speaking of awesome black women who are powerful and influential, it's Tish James, who also has targeted uh, President. Well, I shouldn't say targeted. She's brought him up on on crimes, serious crimes. And here she is at the microphones yesterday at the uh, the last day of Trump's trial. Poised, professional and calm as always. Very careful with her words. And I love it all. This is our um, last day in our case against Donald Trump for persistent and repeated fraud, illegality. This case has never been about politics or personal vendetta or about name calling. This case is about the facts and the law. And Mr. Donald Trump violated the law. And as you know, the judges already found that he, in fact, violated the law 
for repeated fraud over a period of years. And so I want everyone to know that the personal attacks really don't bother me. The fact is, is that this trial has shown and we have produced evidence about the scope, the scale, the depth, the breadth of the illegality, the fraud that impersonally enriched Donald Trump and his family. I want to thank the judge. I want to thank my team. I want to thank opposing counsel. Uh, but at the end of the day, the point is simple. No matter how powerful you are, no matter how rich you are, that no one is above the law and that the law applies to all of us equally and fairly. I trust that justice will be done, and I'm confident in that. And I'm extremely proud of the case that we put on. Good and evening. I'm extremely proud of New York's my attorney general, our attorney general. And uh, awesome. Tish James, well done there the, throughout the whole time. I'm sure it couldn't have been easy getting called names and threats every single day, all day long for, well, years now. OK, well, finally, the last piece of sound I have for you is I try to end on something funny, something happy. And that is what I'm doing. Stephen Colbert on The Late Show last night, making fun of the news and his monologue. Good stuff. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. There is. And this is true. These people don't know because they have to turn off their cell phones before they come in here. Is this this just happened, right? There was breaking news about former governor of New Jersey, and man, so nice, they christed him twice. Chris Christie. <laughs> Tonight at 5 o'clock, so this just happened a little while ago, Chris Christie officially announced he's dropping out of the presidential race. Oh. Yeah, he made, he made this tough decision. <laughs> After looking at the polls and realizing it was an easy decision. <laughs> Here's the Christie is not expected to make any endorsements at this time, but the timing of this decision indicates that he's clearing the way for Nikki Haley to take all of his voter. (laughs) Of course. Of course. That's a stroker. That's a a three-stroker. Of course, Chris Christie was the most high-profile and consistent critic of Trump still in the Republican primary, unlike Ron DeSantis, whose campaign slogan is, Ron DeSantis, Trump 2024. Ooh. Now, here's the thing. Speaking of which, obviously the news cycle moves so quickly that every once in a while it's important to just pause, reflect, and remember that yesterday the former president's lawyer argued that it's okay for him to murder people. (laughs) Because yesterday, in in case you missed this, Trump attended a January 6th appeals court session in which his lawyer actually claimed that presidential immunity covers having rivals assassinated. Yes, Donald Trump, who is running for president, is publicly arguing that the president is allowed to assassinate his political rivals. It's the boldest campaign move. If you do that, you have to be quicker. (laughs) Because I got a joke coming up. It's the boldest campaign move since Nixon's 72 slogan, I will strangle you in your sleep. Now, I I talked about this story yesterday because it made me very scared and angry or scangry. (laughs) But later when I got home, I thought about it some more and it made me even more scared that I wasn't even more angry. It, It just wasn't hitting me yet how horrible this was. The story is like eating a very spicy burrito. When you first get a taste, yes, it's shocking. But 24 hours, you realize, oh, this is gonna do some real damage. There you go, Colbert, The Late Show on CBS last night. All right, well, that's all I've got for you in news headlines and sound. I don't always do this on a Friday because I have the hangouts on Friday nights, but I got it done. I got it done and in just in the nick of time. Now, let's get to my guests, Christian Finnegan and Ophira Eisenberg, are two hilarious, brilliant stand-up comedians, two of my favorites, good friends of mine. Christian has so many specials and albums. Go find them. Go get them. But really subscribe right now to New Music for Old, his newsletter about music, giving new suggestions every week. It's so great. I love reading it. I've learned so much already. And, of course, subscribe to listen and support Ophira Eisenberg, her albums, her book, and her podcast, Parenting is a Joke. Both of them will join me in Vegas. And here is our theme song written to us uh, for us by 
Gareth Sever of Buckets and Boards, who will be there as well, performing and partying with us March 22nd and 23rd. Take it away, Gareth. Chris Channel, Fear Ice, and again, no fish, Jen Pinnenberg. However you slice them up, you get a different word. If you say it fast enough, you clearly sound absurd. When you say it louder, it sounds like they're real words. Chris Channel, Fear Ice, and again, no fish, Jen Pinnenberg. I don't think you're ready for what you haven't heard from Chris Channel. Yeah, we yeah. are back together. Christian and Afira joining me together here on the podcast and soon March 22nd and 23rd in Las Vegas. Guys, thank you very much for joining me. It's been way too long. I'm glad that we're together today and I'm looking forward to being together in person in that wonderful, wonderful city in the middle of the desert. I'm super <laughs> psyched about it. I'm super excited about it. Me too. Although I, I wonder... I wonder what the vibe is going to be like with the three of us kind of looking at each other and be like, are we enjoying Vegas as much as we should? <laughs> like, cause I, I, I don't really see any like a hard partying going on. Oh, I'm pla- Speak for yourself. <laughs> I'm planning on hosting a morning hike, so I will not be doing too much oh. hard partying. So anybody that wants to go on the morning hike with me, I'm going to get some advice from the locals who are helping produce this and, and so if you want to join me on the hike, uh, but other than that, I despise that that place and they know that. But I just my primary issue is not all the obvious things um, that you could lose your whole paycheck. If you're finally that you finally made it, you're performing in Vegas and there goes your whole paycheck and one blackjack hand on the way back to your room. Uh, but it's that it, how much of an energy suck it is. I, I, I don't like I, you know, Mr. Sustainability, my my skin crawls a little bit when there's too much electricity and water being spouted everywhere to keep golf courses green it's the, the city shouldn't exist that's my main gripe your feelings on vegas ophira well the last time i was there which was about uh i think six months ago first of all there's a great hike where you can go to some of uh, like there's a canyon where there was a lake but because of <laughs> climate change uh the lake oh. has mostly evaporated and you and they're finding mob hit dead bodies we can go Ooh. see that. I heard the uh, the cool. new the new sphere, the energy it needs, the electricity it needs, sucked that lake right dry. <laughs> <laughs> also, here's an unpopular thing to say in Vegas, but a true thing in downtown Vegas, there is one of the best bookstores I've ever been to. Oh. How about that? You can tell really? how I enjoyed Vegas. It's great. Is it all about how to calculate odds? Like, is no, it just sort of? No, it's full of philosophy, and I mean, it is a beautiful. Everything bookstore. must be collected with dust. <laughs> like it must be covered with dust. Everything. Like no one's ever pulled. A every day book. is drag reading day. Drag library <laughs> sure, book. That's right. Drag person. And third, last time I was there, there was a rumor, and I w- we can we can get in some journalist activity that they were going to drain the Bellagio fountain because it is such an energy suck, and oh. because the evaporation uh, is such a high rate that the water cannot be fully recycled; it has to be added to anymore. And from whoever owns its point of view, it is not worth it. Well, yeah, of course it evaporates. When you shoot water all the way up to the fucking moon <laughs> through the atmosphere, it's not going to all come back down. You ever seen that fountain? It shoots of water. It's insane. It's it's lovely and beautiful and a fascinating it's, it's feat of God's it? bidet. <laughs> <laughs> it cleans God's asshole, that fountain. And, and even God's like not good enough. I yeah, feel so like there's less water. There's a little less water. Also those people who have the, those those uh, bidets you can attach to your toilet now, the ones that you can yeah. buy. I have people who swear by them. But oh uh, yeah, I got to get one of those. And I'm going to ask you about that before we get off Vegas. You got to tell me what's been your experiences. Have you performed there? Have you spent time there? Have you gone to a bachelor party? I did that once. I have never been to a bachelor party. I've performed there a few times. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I've just been. I, I think I went on a vac- just a genuine vacation. No, I don't know. It's always been a perform. But I've, I've but you know, I, I've spent like a couple of days on either end performing. I I, I don't mind it. I, it's like I, I, it's ho- so hard to talk about Vegas without just lapsing into the same cliches. Sure. Where everybody says like, oh, you know, I like the old Vegas. If you get off the strip and you go down to whatever, uh, whatever, yeah. what's the what's that? Uh, that Tremont Street, Street, Tremont. You know, it's like it. I, I I don't know. Part of me does wonder like, what would like three months in vegas be like like once you really got the sort of cheesiness out of your mind like where you just actually were living in vegas i wonder what that would be like 
like you might uh, go to the bookstore. <laughs> I, I might. Yeah, it might come to that. Well, <laughs> I'm very excited. Uh, it's a weird place to live also. Uh, but hey, thank you, Sheila, and especially Cassie and anybody else, you know, helping organize. But they live in Vegas uh, for welcoming us. For They swear by it. A lot of people obviously love living in that climate and atmosphere and love area. It. But uh, I just am very excited that we're doing this and it's going to be a fun time and I look forward to, to being out there with you guys and I'm, I'm just very much looking forward to, to doing it. I hope people I hope people come. Tell people to come, please. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Be, I'm scared. I'm actually scared of gambling. I've only ever played blackjack in one of the casinos in Tremont because yeah. they don't mind if you mess up a little bit and it's pretty like you can put down, you know, whatever, yeah, 50 I, bucks or so that you don't have to really invest i don't like to add yeah. at all much less under pressure it's like 10 plus queen i'm like ah, i don't know <laughs> what does it add up to i don't know leave me alone hit me i love blackjack like i i, I actually really do oh. enjoy it. And, and i uh oh, a card I love shark. Too strong word i have played the thing that i don't like about blackjack and casinos is the conversation with the other people at oh the table. but we'll be like, there no way yeah, i can't yes. wait I so hope that Christian is playing blackjack and doesn't know that there's a listener next to him who heard him say that and just chats <laughs> him the fuck up. No, it's not. It's not that. It's not. It's not the chat itself. It's the kind of people who tend to want to chat at the blackjack table. It's the. It's the office funny guy. It's mm. the. You know, and and they all say the same fucking jokes every time. You know, like uh, they'll say the dealer like. uh Give me a seven, and then they'll get they won't they'll give like a three. Like that's not a seven, you know. Uh, oh. Like, oh, you're killing me here, and like oh. it's all random. And the thing that Ophira was talking about, how like they don't get mad if you quote unquote mess up. I hate that attitude. Like your what you do is just as likely to help me as it is to hurt me. This idea that like oh you played your hand wrong and therefore I got fucked on that. Yeah, that happens sometimes, but also sometimes the reverse happens where. You totally misplay your hand and then I benefit from that, but nobody ever right. remembers that. And so I just, I just don't like the sort of the, just the guys who try to like hold court at the table. Do you know what I mean? Who want to like, you know, it just shut up. I like when it's j literally just me and the dealer and I'm just literally, we're just handing chips back and forth to each other for, uh, I can't wait till <laughs> listeners haunt you with funny guys, at the <laughs> office stuff as they, you don't even know it's them. You just, start eyeballing them well listen it's gonna be awesome very much looking forward to being with you guys out there and seeing you do your vegas things i will definitely watch you how do you feel about us watching you play uh cards it's fine the thing is once you've played blackjack for a while there's really very few circumstances where you actually need to make a decision the the math uh, there's a certain math to not even a math it's just a memorization of like if i get this i do this if i get this i do this it's right. really there's only a few circumstances where it's like a judgment call sometimes you don't have the balls to do what you're quote unquote supposed to do but i mean there's just there's rules it's like oh you always double you always well, split eights you know you always double down on 14 or not 14 but like nine or whatever what's it, it, it's, the uh, highest number you hit on uh you uh 16 Oh, okay. If you get 17, uh, he you sounds stay. like he, I I'm, know. He knows what he's doing. I, I, I commit now. And, and you would not, but you would not hit on a 16 if the dealer was showing a four or okay. something he like that. Okay. He knows what he's, he, he clearly knows what he's talking about, Afira. I commit now to uh, give, make a $100 bet. He has to play the hand. I invite everybody to watch it. And oh. then if we win, I'll give one him one hand. I mean, that's anything can happen one hand. I mean, you can't. But well, sure. no, it's just a, it's just a, a joke because I can't, I don't want to gamble. It's just a fun, it's a way to get yeah. people. It's, I'm just hyping the show. No, I yeah. just, I like, I like a good, come like, watch $10 us table. lose my money in one hand. Uh, That'd be fun. All right. So yeah. bunch of things that I want, I, I told you guys before I started and, listeners if they've been listening this week know had some very serious conversations uh this week and i wanted to talk about some issues some some things some trends some lifestyle happenings with you guys and get your reaction uh that aren't necessarily you know deep psychological dives or crisis of uh, of you know apocalyptic terms um and that is for example 
uh, how do you pay for things these days? Because I think I might be behind. You go to a store. Do you ever use cash? When do you use cash? Are you going to reveal anything about your taxes, Ophira, by answering this question? Do you use Apple Pay? Do you send people money? Do you use the? How do you generally uh, pay for things these days? Ophira plays pays for everything with loonies. I don't know if oh, you know that. Is that I know a Canadian? lovely, and sometimes a toonie. <laughs> Canadian currency uh, of some sorts. It, it is pretty funny when I mean it, nobody even uses that stuff anymore because all change across the global landscape, I believe, is just now in a jar that you eventually put in a uh, one of those machines. Yeah. <laughs> yes, all change across 2%. the world is in jars in your basement. That's funny. Uh, I, you know what? I prime. I don't even take out a wallet anymore. I pay everything with my phone. Ah. Everything. Everything. Really? Okay. Never yeah. take out a credit card. Why did, why did she wink when she said everything that last Actually, time? it's true. At a restaurant, you do everything. have to use it. You do primarily <laughs> still have to use a uh, credit card if you want to do that. But I mean, the idea of cash, sometimes I'll take a cab in New York and I'll do cash just because I want it to go faster. Like I just need to like run out and I'll be like, this yeah, is going to yeah. be 10 bucks. Um, so I'm just going to, but I, I love cash. I do love cash. Go, too, ahead, but I don't go use ahead. How do you, what do you mean you love cash? You still use it? When's the last just, time you gave someone I, a dime or a nickel or an actual quarter on purpose? This morning. What, I, I, what use, I a, use cash primarily. What uh, kind of a... uh, I just, I, I think it's just from, from being, just doing club spots. You know, I'm just, I'm used to having cash on hand. Right. And I, I find it just clean and tactile. And, and I, I don't know, it just, it, I I think I'm sorry. I feel like I sort of jumped in and interrupted. I apologize, no. but uh, no. I have a theory. Strap in, folks. Christian Finnegan Ooh. has a theory. Okay, um, that one of the things behind inflation right now, uh, and why people think the economy and why prices have gone up so much, is that we have severed the connection between people and their money. That that every when you're just flashing your phone on some sensor uh you don't notice whether something is 50 cents more or 50 cents less you, you, it money becomes very ephemeral and you have no connection to it and i think that companies have r- raised prices during the pandemic and just we've all kind of gotten used to it and i think a contributing factor to that is that we've we sort of lost the connection between like handing over bills and sort of understanding like oh this is more than it used to be I think we just sort of like, oh, what's the number? I just put my phone up. It, it, and so I, I feel like companies are, are taking advantage. That's an interesting of that. theory. It sounds like a Derek wow. Thompson podcaster, Atlantic like article. It. Yeah, yeah. But Ophira, the, I have the, a fifty dollar bill that I keep in my cell phone case, and that's oh, basically yeah. it. It's been there for like it'll sometimes be there for a month, and I and I won't use it. I actually have more than a fifty dollar bill, but I don't want to tell people how much it is. But it's more than fifty. Mm. That's wow. how I know where to get my cocktail cash in Vegas. Exactly. If you steal my phone, uh, you're going to get a cash yeah, bonus. Yeah, you know, it, it, I will tell you that in December, I was, I think somewhat related to what you're thinking, Christian, I was just like, do I even know how I'm spending money? And in December, I actually, because I spend everything on my phone, so then there is a record, I wrote down in a notebook at the end of every day, every single dollar I spent and where. That's called a ledger. To, review to see where I was spending my money and what kind of money I'm spending. And I will tell you that I do a little bit of, um, I do a little bit of buying myself a coffee when I'm wandering around uh, in between spots or things or whatever in New York as literally a little like treat. I'm like, Oh, I'm going to get a coffee. And I looked and there is not one coffee I can purchase in this city that is under $5 and I'm not buying a latte and I'm not buying a Mm. cappuccino. I'm buying a medium coffee with milk. Yeah, that's all. And I was just like, wait. And I was like, when the fuck did that happen? What, that you came up mm-hmm. with a loser coffee order? No. Thank I'm just you. joking. Thank I you. like always. I, okay, always. I like black only. <laughs> a loser. I, I just like the idea that, like, the, that would, the way you'd want your coffee just renders you to be a loser. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I, a loser. I mean, don't even get me started on the people that drink iced coffee year round. Okay. Oh, but, they are monsters but thank you it is i agree with that uh and it is that's that's fascinating that you were keeping a ledger for a lot of reasons and i don't know what that does or doesn't do for you but let me ask you uh, that is part of week five of the artist's way by the way is is that right oh 
He's all artist. A ledger journal? Uh, like for a week, you're supposed to write down every single purchase you make to sort of identify your connections with money or your issues with money. Yeah. How do you uh, know that? I'm in the middle of doing an artist's way uh, accountability group right now. It's great. Really? We've been, I've been hearing about it and talking about it with him. It sounds awesome. And I've, I've been thinking a lot about it ever since he introduced it and having accountability in other areas of my life. If you looked at my ledger and what I've spent in the last 48 hours, uh, you could easily figure out you wouldn't have to be a detective to know. It uh, looks like somebody's getting water in their basement living room. Uh, all oh, I've been buying yeah. is things to fight the leak uh, uh. and and doing it instead of necessarily hiring someone because I think I can't. And guess what? I think I have won the war. Uh, but that's what I've been doing. And I wanted to ask you uh, another question along the lines of, of money. It, when I moved out of New York City to the suburbs, I one of the things I missed was food delivery. Now I can get anything delivered to my house, anything. So it's like living in New York almost anywhere. I mean, I can get food and I can get shoelaces. W- what's it like living in New York or probably any major city now, Ophira, in terms of ordering stuff? What do you order? When do you order? Is there anything that you wouldn't order or cannot order yet? And how quickly I'm does still, it come? What's life like? Yeah, I'm still stuck in the fact that you have shoes that involve laces still. What is this, the 20s? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, you know what? You nailed me. Like I mostly wear Crocs. Slip on. I mostly yeah. wear Crocs. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, even, no, there are real shoes that are slip on now. Kizik, uh, K I Z I K. Yeah. Uh, huh. they're, they have like a cool heel where they're like real shoes with laces and stuff, but you can just slip your foot into them and they feel secure. They're like real shoes. All right. Someone's doing yeah. a live read for Kizik yeah. over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I, 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 I mean, really, we don't order in a lot of food because we, we really try to make food uh, all the time. Um, weirdos. just for whatever reason, we don't, uh, eat, we don't order in a lot of food, uh, but I, I do, I order in goods, just groceries. I order in always, uh, almost always. I like grocery shopping. It's just time consuming. Uh, and you can just, you're like, do, 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 fun little pastime. Clothes, I order online. Matter of fact, I went into a clothing store during December and I was like, oh, never again. Back to, it was such a miserable experience. And I actually started thinking retail is going to die. Like retail is dying, but retail yeah. is going to even die more because the only thing that you, that they can offer you is a better experience, more personal experience. And because I, I'm just assuming it's such that the people that get those jobs, they're terrible jobs. They're not being compensated because retail is dying and there's no, there's no value put in this job. So they're shitty at their jobs. So the actual experience is slow and miserable. <laughs> I like that point and, about and, no and actually, I'll give the counterpoint to that when she, or fear is done. But, yeah, I was just gonna say, right. and then you see, like, I'll see a, a sweater online, and I'll be like, "Oh God, that looks beautiful," because it's on a very good-looking person. It's well lit. It's styled. It's posed. And then I see forty of them hanging on a rack, and I was like, "Oh, this is garbage. It should be one dollar." <laughs> uh, just because the, the amount of them, the number of them makes you the makes amount, it and you can just see valuable. the r- exactly, yeah, mm-hmm. and you can see the sort of like crappy fabric that it really is. Christian Finnegan with a counterpoint to is retail dying or is it something? Well, I, not necessarily that it's not dying, but that their benefit or, or the, 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 the bad part for me, I have, I am part of the weird body club, uh, which is, a, <laughs> I, there's so reason, many accountability groups you're in. I know. No. <laughs> uh, hey guys, so is your body still weird this week? Okay, good. Just making sure it's keeping you, just keeping you Chap- accountable. Uh, chapter five of the artist way. <laughs> It doesn't matter what weight I am at because I have I've gone up and down the scale for the last 20 years of my life, my my entire life. For whatever reason, I am always between sizes. Either I'm between a medium and a large or large and extra large, extra large and double X. Like I'm never nothing ever fits me properly. It feels like. And I just I'm literally have a box sitting next to me. I these cool shirts that I saw on Instagram and I bought I bought three of them in three different sizes or three different fits, <laughs> thinking like, oh, OK, well, I'll figure out which is the best one and then I'll return to it, whatever. Well, none of them fit. So I returned them all in order in, in a different size and none of those. And so I had to package them up and, yeah. print, you know, do all that crap. And now I have to do it all again because these ones don't fit either. I and it. So I have now I wasted it. so much fucking time just to now try to get yep. the money back that well, I've already spent or if I had gone to a store. I would walk yeah. out there. Uh, uh, wait, no, because that's the exact reason I went into a store 
That's the exact reason. I was like, I can, I cannot like endlessly be returning jeans. Right. We're just going in. And then I went to the store and I was like, hey, can I get this size jean, this wash? And they're like, we're out of it, but you can order it online. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Back you're not doing yourself any favor, uh, brick and mortar media, by letting us know <laughs> how much better the options are online. <laughs> I have such an, a hard time. This is fascinating, actually, that this is how we are all consuming, probably in slightly different but similar ways. I have a hard time, and I don't know what it is about me. It's one of those weird things, returning things. And I, I think it's because I haven't found out just how easy it is. I finally uh, returned something. And the guy came to the house and picked it up. And apparently okay, I'm that's glad you finished that sentence. Like, wow, I was really, <laughs> was really excited. About that. Guy, the UPS guy came and ejaculated upon <laughs> pickup, which was, but if I had packaging known. is so beautiful. If I, the thing is though, if he didn't, if he didn't ejaculate that day, he would give you a window the next day where he'd come back and ejaculate. <laughs> if I had known that the guy was going to uh, have an orgasm, I'd have been returning stuff a long time ago. Point is, <laughs> uh, is it always that easy to return? Do you have to print out labels? Why do I have a phobia about returning everything to the point that I've probably lost, I don't know, thousands of dollars just not returning stuff on time or at all? Ophira. Wait, you don't return? Th- I mean, I not think they've actually made it. I think they've made it harder to return things because every I mean everyone just was returning things like crazy. Mm. They and doing exactly what Christian's model is, like you order six of the same item fully intending that there's a large return happening. So people are overbuying with the with the intent to uh return, but now they're making it harder. They're making it there's there's charges. They may or like you have to drop it off weird places. They're making it harder on you. So actually the fact that you think it's easy it used to be easier, Pete. Oh, I'm well, the, the there's the, the Happy Returns, which is like a, a company that sort of works That's for right. smaller, smaller companies, and they make it super easy. And I happen to be like uh, within 500 yards of a Staples, which has like a UPS counter and stuff. Like, so it is easier for me than than other people. But uh, yeah, I don't know what the question was. Can I can just you, say? Can you really basically quickly? call something that it is easier for me than it is for other people? You know, it's it, when you're gifted like I am, when you're blessed, <laughs> hashtag blessed. Um, can I just say when I made my hack joke about the UPS, the next window, uh, the next day, the look of just disgust on Ophira's face. <laughs> as she just shook her head and she's like, ugh. Yeah. Ugh. We took that I was just wondering if there would be one conversation we ever have that a dick doesn't enter. <laughs> Uh, why start now? That's both I, of your stunt. Well, I just why? said, yeah, yeah I was dick <laughs> enter. I, I, we're all trying to think of like how to make that a joke. What you just said, <laughs> you made it worse. Dick enter made it worse on purpose, maybe <laughs> even. So maybe. the other thing I really wanted to uh, discuss, not only how, how we live in, in terms of all those ways, but I wanted to ask you both about if you thought that watching TV today is just so much more different and your life is so much more different and in a better way. I'm going to make an argument that it's better in that we can watch what we want to watch whenever we want to watch uh, as and, and save time. I can watch a three hour football game in like an hour if I want to. Uh, but I could also argue against that families don't sit and watch a show together. We don't have a communal experience as a country or as a community when a show comes on and uh, there and nobody can sell anything to us by the uh, traditional way in terms of ads. But I'll, I'll see it both ways. But I like it this way uh, because I have more control over my time. What do you think, Christian, about how we watch things today and how it's different than our kids generation or our kids? If you're over here, well, it sounds like you've already had this internal debate on your own, Pete. <laughs> but uh, you really already presented both sides of the issue. But now I, I will say one thing I do slightly miss about not even when we were kids, but from like 10, 15 years ago is coming home to a, a full DVR. You, you know what I mean? Like when you'd go on vacation and you'd be like, all right, well, I'm coming from my vacation and that sucks, but I'm going to have two episodes of the Sopranos and one episode of whatever, like you know, that you would just know that you had just this fully stocked list of stuff that you were. And now obviously we can just watch that now whenever we want, but there's something about, it's like a gift being wrapped in Christmas wrapping is somehow more exciting than if it was just sitting around on the table. Do you know what I mean? That it's like, uh, I don't know. There's something, there's something nice about that feeling of like, Oh, I can't wait to get home because my shows are on, on my DVR, you know, 
I miss things like power hours. <laughs> <laughs> when they would that? try to uh, advertise like that a bunch of your of like that they had put shows in a specific schedule so that oh, you know, yeah, yeah, they yeah. would have like they're like oh a block of your favorite Must stuff is, yeah you know, exactly yeah, I, used, yeah. I mean I, I used to always oh my god Friday, you know Sunday nights we're gonna watch all this so I kind of I do and they try to do that that was like the live musical thing and you know I guess sporting events still people in theory yeah. are gonna watch that in real time but I I frankly watch less tv because the choices are so overwhelming for me mm. like i think if i would just sit down and throw it on, like, at a hotel when i sit down and throw on the television usually it's for background noise i actually watch more television because i have less choices well and there's that randomness feeling do you know of flipping yeah. channels we're like, like huh? what could be and then it's like <laughs> Oh, I guess I'm watching The Breakfast Club for some reason. Like, <laughs> exactly. I don't know yeah. why. <laughs> I think I turn it on just because I like uh, a little bit of company. Sometimes when I'm checking into a hotel, yeah. I, li- I like the the voices of, of somebody maybe. I, I don't know. but I, I mean, Shawshank Redemption would have never been watched if it was on <laughs> now. Yeah, well, absolutely. 100%. Okay. There's, I mean, laying in bed after a show, after a road gig... Like coming home yeah. with your with your junk food or or whatever yeah. you know, and laying on a hotel bed and flipping channels, like it doesn't really get better than that. It, I well, agree, it's not, but, it's, it's, I, but like there is there's something about lovely about it. Well, yeah. the only thing yeah. that gets better is when you uh, planned for an even better uh, snack, like you had dinner left over or something else that you didn't have Ooh. to like. Oh, there's nothing left but a, bo- a bag of co- uh, combos. But, oh, wait, I had two slices left over that I can oh, dig into yeah. now at 1 a.m. and enjoy. Yeah, the, the DC Improv, the hotel they put you up at, is, like, directly across the street from a Wawa. There you go. And, like, coming home after, <laughs> a, like, a show and just swinging by the Wawa and getting yourself some shit to yep. eat and fucking hanging out in the hotel bed. It's, I, I that's, that's heaven right there. But Fira doesn't eat past 11 p.m. Uh, you know what I, you know what I like? I like, uh, I like, I, I like going to the mini bar. I like going like, you know what? I've got some, a little bit of junk food and now I'm going to open up that screw top mini Merlot because, and see if I can find a rerun of friends. Because you think you deserve it after a good show. Yeah. Yeah. yeah even on a bad show. <laughs> deserve more. Especially. Yeah. Hey, let me ask you both one other thing, how you're dealing with and thinking about like, scams you know i think you both know maybe you don't that my daughter got like bilked for Mm. thousands of dollars by a guy called her up and and basically said he was the fbi and made her put money in bitcoin uh people are still obviously falling for anything from an email to a text to a phone call they're getting better at it and i wonder how much you think about it or worry about it day to day your your computer getting hacked or anything um, because I, I haven't, even though it happened to me, I'm, I'm not thinking that much about it, but I wonder if I'm alone and I'm just feeling too safe. Uh, Christian, do you, do you ever worry about any of that anymore? At I all? mean, this is one of the ways that being a bit of a Luddite when it comes to my finances works to my advantage, you yeah. know, that, that I you have a purse, I don't pay for things online or whatever. You know, I, I don't, I mean, I guess I do like everybody does, but, but I, I feel like, and also my sort of tendency to just be like, eh. It'll all it'll all work out somehow. I'll just close my eyes and hope this all fixes itself. Uh, sometimes that actually helps because when I've gotten those sort of like we've seen what you're doing on your web camera, like when I get those yeah, sort that, of, those you know, of things, scams yeah. that we all get, uh, we all get, I don't them, get right, those. Guys? Yeah, oh, guys get them. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll let you figure out why. But um, <laughs> when I get those, my my main instinct is like, eh, it'll all be fine. You know, like I, I don't I don't have the effort. I'm not going to go to an ATM. I'm not going to like, you know, if, if, if my life is ruined, it's going to get ruined. Go ahead and release whatever footage you have of me. Um, I, I yeah, I don't I don't I, I just feel like, you know, and I we may have talked about this before, but my dad has been taken That's right. advantage yeah, of. I did know that. Yeah. About that, you know, and and uh, I've all my my main two things that I try to drill into his head are just, you know, one, never click on a link. That gets right. texted to you. Doesn't matter if it says Amazon. It's not Amazon. <laughs> like, don't click on a link and never give any information to anyone in a call that you did not initiate. 
the right. rules. So, like, I'd, I'd yeah. add one as I turn to Ophira, which is have a code word with your family because now they're using your own voice. Mm-hmm. And so you simply they say, we've got your son's been arrested. And then they, you hear his voice. Mom, you really hear it. It's an A.I. And then you say back to them. Uh, tell my son who's been arrested just to tell me the password. So I know this is not AI and he has to be like, I'm sure yours would be something Canadian based or uh, his favorite <laughs> kid show. I don't know. But See, so that's I, one rule you're supposed to have. But are you afraid of hoser? Uh, uh, hoser? No one ever really said that. Did you know that? No, that was a very no one ever said thing. that. Oh, really? Uh, but huh. no one in Canada said that. That was totally made up. Early Bob and Doug McKenzie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Oh, wow. No one ever said that. Huh. Yeah, it's true. Huh. And uh, I've never met anyone that's ordered back bacon. I feel like it's now on menus because it's like people were like, but there's back bacon in Canada. And Canada was like, OK. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's kind of like like Chinese restaurants with like General Tso's chicken. It was like, OK, sure. If you say this. <laughs> Whatever. Sure. That's, I guess we'll just rename 14 <laughs> General Tso's. <laughs> I so I, I I don't get a lot. I mean, I primarily I'm always I am interested in this AI, how AI is going to really you were talking about a scam I didn't even know where yeah. they, oh my God. I mean, I feel like the scam stuff I get is still like links and I kind of find it hilarious when I get stuff from Amazon or a bank or whatever that looks fishing, but it looks pretty close. And then you just go to look yep. at what address it was sent from. And it's like Amazon customer at, at XOB, yeah, yeah. like just, and you're always like, how come yeah, on? This is a multi-billionaire, <laughs> a multi-billion corporation. This is how they would, would do this for sure. XOB. Yeah. So I feel like I could still, it still seems very uh, easy to see through. Yeah. But mm-hmm. what you're talking about and, and what your daughter witnessed to me is l- different level and scares the shit out of me. I, I, I mean, I, the other day I took a subway in New York from my home to Midtown and I, because I hadn't been home for a while, I was just counting whether you like this idea of or not, how many people were going to ask me to buy chocolates on the subway for money in general or something. And it was the number in that short journey was um, 16. And I was what? thinking about that. Huh. And I was thinking about well, of the 16 people, there's going to be some people who, you know, obviously are general, genuinely homeless, uh, out on the street, issues, need help on. And then there's going to be a certain amount of people that are scams. Always. Yeah. And then and I was just thinking, like, what, how? Do I differentiate between this? Do I give everyone a dollar? Like what I was really thinking about, like, how would I, how do I approach this as a person in society? I ignoring it, I feel like is brutal. And yet, yeah, I mean, there, there's so much, uh, I feel like the world is steering us to ignoring it. Like that, that is the, the safest solution is to, to just completely wall yourself off to human suffering. Well, there was one woman on the subway, a young woman who was well dressed. She had nails that had sparkles on. Like, you know, she she was not um, she clear, had mental health problems. And she went on the subway and just started yelling at the subway. Can someone use their phone to Google all 24 hour parking lots in Times Square? Because I left my car there three days ago and I'm still trying to get back to it. Mm. And everyone was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody wanted to, and I was like, "Oh, you look too good. You, you like this doesn't see like nobody wants to do well, with it." And problem, also, it's just like this sounds like a lot. I, I'm just going five lot. stops. Like I, this sounds like yeah. a lot of time. My anxiety <laughs> rose too. I was like, "Listen, if you could refine that search a little bit, I'll try to help you out." But uh, you know, if you're looking for <laughs> yeah, times of a certain movie is going to start at a certain location, I'll definitely Google that for you. But that's a wide search. I've tried. To find my car in New York many times. It's not easy. I remember once uh, when I was in college and I, you know, was living in the East Village and I was walking through Astor, Astor Place and this guy, it was the middle of winter and he was not wearing a coat and he was, you know, very upscale looking dude. And he walked up and he's like, I got locked out of my apartment and I need to get to a locksmith and it, it, you just give me like $10 just so I can, and, and whatever, I fell for it and I gave him $10. And then like a week later, I was walking the same path and the guy came up to me again. Yeah. And when I started cussing him out, he didn't even look offended or bothered. He was just like, okay, next. Like he just walked away. Like it was just like, oh, I already got you. You you know, and that's, that's, I think people have to understand the mindset of, of con men. Like they're not, 
you know, they're not evil as so much as just like they're doing a job and you're a customer. And once they've hit you, like there, there's just no, you know, people, people always think that like con men are like brilliant. I think I've said this on the podcast before, but it's like con men, you know, are not brilliant. Scammers are not brilliant. They just have no shame. That's, right. that's the conscience, you know, no conscience. Yeah. 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 It's just, they're not bothered by it. They don't have that gag reflex that most people have. So on the plane, on their like little dumb uh, in-flight entertainment system, my son and I were playing the cup game, right? You know, just the visual version of the cup game. Something put under a cup, three cups are oh, moving yeah. around, and then you have to figure out. And he's like, I'm so good at this. I get it every time. And for whatever reason, I felt the need to say, never play it on the streets. Yeah, that's okay? how I, I lost and money. And he goes what are you talking about? And then Street. I was like, does this still exist? Or am I talking about like when we take the carriage to the shoemaker? 100%. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make sure your pocket watch is out of sight. And if you do get scammed, throw a horseshoe over your shoulder. What? Uh, all right. Well, that was the final thing I was going to ask you, which was what is your go-to? What are you wasting time on? And it's not negative, whatever. Like you sit on the toilet, you're waiting in line. What apps are you using before maybe you go to bed? That's when I spend way too much time looking at my phone when I should be reading. Uh, what apps are your go tos these days? Now, uh, Christian, I know you play like some some games and stuff on your phone. I feel like uh, I believe, and I don't I don't play any games. I don't know if you do, Ophir, but I'll start with this you. Feels are, like a very Byron Allen Byron Allen lead in. Like Chris, Christian, you've been playing some games <laughs> on your phone, haven't you? <laughs> now, Christian, I know you love Candy Crush. Go ahead with your bit. Here's the thing about Candy Crush. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> Oh, am I going so, first? Yeah, okay, what, are your apps? Uh, what are your what are your go tos these days? I mean, well, I, usually... I mean, honestly, if I were to really, if anyone were to ever find out just how much time I spend reading about the New York Knicks, it would be ah, so embarrassing to me. I it is never ending. I just completely bury myself in it. But but in terms of games, I do you know I do the Wordle, I do the crossword puzzle, I mm. do spelling bee, uh, I do a lot, I guess. Um, and I do Music League, which is this, uh, like a, a competitive playlist app, uh, where you kind of make playlists and stuff and, and people judge them or whatever. Uh, and that's a massive waste of time. But, uh, love but, it. Yeah. I love taking us inside your phone use and those are all interesting, uh, and tell us a lot about yourself. I'm actually going to a Knicks game, Knicks game next uh, week for the first time in years. My friend, oh, fun. Chrissy Greer. At Barclays? Who, I hope uh, there's somebody there to explain the game to you. Thank you. And with, jealous, where do jealous. you put the ball? Is that a slam dunk, Daddy? <laughs> Ophira, if I looked at your phone, <laughs> if we looked at your phone, what boring. apps would get the so most boring. usage? I I play Wordle. Uh huh. And then I play Wordscapes, even though I've been told it has a very Christian bent to it. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes you you figure it out because devil and evil are never words. It always goes to like, no, not part of this puzzle. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious! <laughs> wow what what is what is Wordscapes like? What is how, what kind of game is it? It's a it's like it's basically a crossword puzzle where a bunch of is it a crossword puzzle? It's no, yeah, you're just ex- making words. You're making words, uh, but they're mm-hmm. in like you just have to figure out words that are in. I'm um, literally going to download it now. Is it an app so, or is it a, is it's it an a app. website? It's it an is. app, and I never use. There's lots of bells and whistles to it. I don't use any of the bells and whistles. There's you know th- to hints. Christian the, loves lightly Christian based word games. It's super easy, and then every once in a while it gets hard. So be prepared to be underwhelmed, which is how they keep you going. Under why his is today's eye. word Hosanna again? <laughs> And it's it's weird because there's a few words that are always repeating that you're like those are words like ire i r e like that's a constant. Yeah. It's, uh, I don't know if you I don't know if you saw this thing like you can tell something was written by AI if the word delve was used. I, AI loves the word delve. Interesting. All, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of crossword puzzle words that you see all the time. Like I feel like actor uh, Isai Morales, his career has been kept alive by being a good crossword Is puzzle that answer. Right? <laughs> It'll always say actor blank Morales. And it's always Isai. Uh, by the way, I just want to pull back the curtain. Once Ophira laid out the, the there's a Christian undertone to this word game, Christian and I 
our minds, our comedic minds started going uh, and mine was going probably further and longer. I came up with the phrase under his eye and when it got stepped on and no one heard it, plus it's a phrase, not a word. Mm. Christian came up with what I would argue might be the funniest word that you could come up with, which was Hosanna. Well done. <laughs> you well done. <laughs> I didn't even hear that. Oh my God. Darn you, StreamYard. Sometimes you make me not hear words. Uh, it's the app, of course, we're using. Okay, finally. So that's it. Th- th- those are your, uh, I, I go, I'm boring. I, I'm typical. I do a lot of social media and news. Yeah, I do social media. And I will tell you because oh, I don't good read, you. I don't read, um, I don't buy magazines anymore. Like I don't buy fashion magazines, but that was a mindless thing I used to enjoy, like literally flipping through fashion magazines. So now I do it on shopping apps. I literally open up Nordstrom and I go like, all right, what's new? And I just li- yeah. literally look at the outfits. <laughs> um, by the way, oh, I wow. want to push back. Mm-hmm. I want to push back on your criticism, acting like I'm a snob. To be clear, like I meant like when I'm wasting time, especially uh, it's like TikTok watching people run into walls. You're over there doing <laughs> word games. You're way snobbier yeah. than I am. That's true. That is yeah. true. I okay. am. I, yeah. I mean, that is. There is no doubt that I am way like you are the least snobby person in the world. And I mean this 100 percent as a compliment, Pete. I, I, and I'm not. I'm not even being sarcastic. You mean by, by you, you mean I'm unsophisticated? Snob, and You're, I love that about you. I'm unsophisticated. I'm I stepped on the compliment. I said you mean unsophisticated. Well, I mean that was implied, but uh, I no, I. I I am constantly uh, trying to be more Pete like in my approach to oh. people in the world. Wow! I, and I'm not. May I'm everyone not... be more Pete like. Ah. May everyone. Well, that is very flattering. I don't know how to respond to that other than to unpack it. And I I'm looking forward to the workshop I'll be giving in person in Vegas. How you can be more Pete like. Church of Pete. Church of Pete. <laughs> uh, Church of Pete. Yep. We're I'll take a, a gamble on Pete. I'll put all the chips on Pete. <laughs> uh, guys, I'll let you go. I so appreciate you doing this. I can't wait to see you again. I hope we can uh, do this uh, several more times before March 22nd, 23rd in Vegas, where we will see each other in, in person. I think we accomplished a lot and gave people a lot of uh, solutions and and also made people feel, oh, my God, that's what I do. That I'm not a, I'm not alone. So thank We're you. We're all together. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. All right. And that is it. There they go. Christian Ophira. Thank you very much. O'Finnegan. See us all in Las Vegas, the 22nd, 23rd of March. Get your tickets now. There is a link in the show notes and you should get your flights and join us in Las Vegas. Can't wait to see you there. Go follow and support both Christian and Ophira. Subscribe to Christian's newsletter, New Music for Olds, and go subscribe to the Parenting is a Joke podcast, which is so, so good that Ophira hosts. All right, that's it. That's all. I will probably have something for you for a Saturday show. We'll see. We're gonna, working on putting it together right now, but thank you very much for joining me today and always support the show with a subscription. Patreon.com slash Pete Downer. John Carroll Taking us out as he does each and every day. Hey, you've been sitting so long, you got the creep, keep me, you got to stand up. Stand up. I think you're driving wheels in a leaking grease. Boy, you better stand up. Stand up. Well, there's a whole lot more of us who know us right. They'll keep right on ignoring us if we keep in tight. You got to open up the window to let in some light. You got to For your fence, even if it ain't a very friendly audience, look they'll begin to listen when you start making sense and you stand up. Stand our ground and then stand up, stand up. Well, the founding fathers all the land for all they had to stand up, they had to stand up. They had a keen imagination for a crystal ball, drawing all the plans of stand up. But all they had to go on was the time they were in with other causes for laws and since they weren't even sent, they knew that change was gonna come before the change would